So we've all been there. We spawn in after drone phase, walking up to the uh, up to the house or whatever site we're on, say it's clubhouse, and then instantly, kabam, you get spawn peaked. And what do you know in the kill feed? It's a dock or a rook with an ACOG. Hey guys, my name's Bo with the 90 Keyboard, and today we're going to be talking about ACOGs on defense in Rainbow Six Siege, and if they should be on defense in Rainbow Six Siege. Let's get right into it. All right, guys, let's talk ACOGs in Rainbow Six Siege. Now, I'm not someone that is against ACOGs in Rainbow Six Siege. I think ACOGs for attackers and defenders are important. Um, spawn peaks are pretty annoying, and I feel like ACOGs do give a overpowered ability to defenders and kind of diminish this, their unique abilities when it comes to what gadgets they're using. For example, Doc is a overpicked operator across the board from both um, console and PC, mainly because Doc, instead of being a healing operator, is more of a fragging operator. Same with Rook, same with Malusi and Wamai before Malusi and Wamai lost their ACOG. And you can see the decrease in the pick rates for Malusi and Wamai when their ACOG got removed and the ACOG was given back to Echo. And Echo had an increased pick rate for the first start of that uh, update where a lot of people were getting Echo. Even the Black Ice skin for Echo's SMG with the ACOG was over 1,000 R6 credits. Now it's around like 500 R6 credits because the pick rate of, pick rate of Echo has gone down a bit. And this is really interesting because I feel that when Ubisoft said that they weren't going to balance operators or nerf or buff operators in, in all intents and purposes based off of the ACOG or sight on their gun, they kind of lied when they took it away from Hawaii and Malusi and we saw you know decrease in their pick rate. And then they buffed Echo in Echo's pick rate by giving him an ACOG. So why don't I think ACOGs should be on defense? Well, I mean... Like I said, I like ACOGs on defense. I mean, it makes spawn peaks nice. It makes holding angles nice. It, it's easy to fight attackers because all attackers have ACOGs, and I think all attackers should have ACOGs because attackers have a disadvantage when it comes to defenders because defenders have control of where the bombs are going to be. Now, if you don't know really much about Rainbow Six Siege, let me give you a summary of Siege. This isn't like Search and Destroy in Call of Duty. In Call of Duty, having whatever site you use, it's more of a fluid three-laned map with Rainbow Six Siege attributes, meaning you plant the bomb, you find the site, you hold the site until the bomb defuses, unless you, your whole team gets killed, the, the defenders have to defend the bomb, and you can win by, you know, defusing the bomb. That's more Call of Duty, but Call of Duty is more fluid when it comes to Rainbow Six Siege. It's more of like 3D chess, where you have to use a drone phase, where you have to find the bombs. As attackers, you don't know where the bomb's gonna be. Yes, we all know on certain sites and certain maps, that where defenders are going to initially start off. Like, for example, Clubhouse, a lot of people go gym, all right? If we're talking Chalet, a lot of people go upstairs first. Um, if we're talking Oregon, everyone plays kids' dorms. All right, it, it's kind of easy to kind of assume where defenders are going to first start out. So in that first initial attack round, you kind of have an idea where the bomb's going to be. But the thing with Rainbow Six Siege is there's a lot of versatility in how defenders set up their sites what walls are reinforced, where there's rotates, where there's head holes. You have a choice as an attacker if you want to play vert, if you want to attack on windows, if you, different ways you could push the site, and intel and drones are important. So as an attacker having an ACOG, you have an advantage because now you can push into site and be a little bit more protected playing long angles than defenders who have the advantage of holding down sight or holding down angles with their ACOG. I'm all for fun. I think ACOGs are great. I honestly think the 1.5 site, site should be implemented back into Rainbow Six Siege with attackers having all ACOGs. So instead of having ACOGs on defense, maybe we bring the 1.5 site back for defenders and get rid of 2.5 sites um, off of defenders so that it's a little bit more balanced. Defenders still have their zoomed capabilities on their sites as well as not having an overzoom 
which this helps them, which helps attackers get into sight a little bit more and be a little bit more protected. Yes, spawn peaks will always be the same. You could spawn peak someone with iron sights. That's just the luck of the draw. If you happen to not know the maps, not know the spawn peaks, and you walk right in front of a window or underneath something and you get spawn peak by a dock with an ACOG or whatever it might be. But why don't I think ACOG should be on defense is the abilities of the defenders. Siege is a gadget based game. Well, at least back in 2019, Gad in 2020, gadget meta was huge. I mean, we had Goya, we had Mira, we had Ella, we had LMG meta as well on attack with Finca and Zofia. But defenders had a huge, huge capability of using their gadgets. Now it feels like with the implementation of ACOGs back, we're not seeing a lot of gadgets being used. A lot of people play Aruni, but do they really put their Aruni gates in strategic spots? Not really, unless you're in high elo, maybe, but still. Aruni has the ACOG on the DMR. And originally, Aruni had a three times sight on the DMR, and it got taken away because it was purely overpowered to have a three times sight on a DMR on defense. And now we see Doc, who isn't actually just a fragger at this point. I mean, remember old Jaeger? If you guys don't remember the beginning of Siege, Jaeger had an ACOG. Jaeger was a very overpowered operator. Jaeger's gun was also really good, too. Kind of like the R4C before it got nerfed. It was a really good gun. Having an ACOG on it made Jaeger one of the most picked operators and one of the most deadly operators in Rainbow Six Siege. And once they got rid of his ACOG, he kind of became mid, especially when they nerfed his gun to the living depths that it's in. Not many people play Jaeger because, well, Jaeger's not a frag op. So instead of getting rid of the 1.5 site, we got rid of Call of Duty meta. We now have meta of the 2.5 site on defense. And this takes away from the abilities. Have you ever been in a game where Doc doesn't stem you because Doc is running around spawn peeking, playing still Call of Duty kind of style, only going for kills? Yeah, it's pretty annoying, especially when Doc is a healer. And it's a very important part of the team to give you heals because unlike Call of Duty, your health doesn't regenerate in Rainbow Six Siege. You need a Doc. You need a, um, a healing op, and even Rook. Rook puts down his shields and runs away at least you get a little bit of health but when it comes to doc doc fully heals you back up and this could help the team unless your doc is going around using his acog on his mp5 or p90 or whatever it might be to just go for kills this really changes the flow of game because instead of seeing a lot of gadgets implemented in siege we're seeing a lot of just fragging and this is the problem of why i think acog should be taken off defense and maybe we should give the 1.5 site back because you still have that zoom capability, but it might force people to start playing the gadgets. Now, in a better sense, you might want to take ACOGs away from defense entirely because, once again, defenders do have the advantage. They have advantage pretty much of everything. A defense in Rainbow Six Siege is overpowered. And they kind of tried this last year, not last, not since January, but last year with trying to bring gadget meta back. I mean, we had RAM, we had Tuberau, we had operators that gave defenders or attackers gadgets, but gadgets aren't really being used. So when they got rid of the 1.5 site thinking it would get rid of this Call of Duty meta, we essentially have Call of Duty meta still, but it's all based off of ACOG. Why we see a lot of people, you know, ACOG crutch, um, which I think really takes away from the game. Siege is more of a strategy based game when it comes down to it. And if we're not using um, our abilities, it, 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 it it really defeats the purpose of playing Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, what's the point of playing Siege if you're not going to use your abilities? Now, if you take the ACOGs away, I think this would force people to pick different operators. So if Doc lost his ACOG, we would probably see a decrease in pick rate on Doc, and we might see more of a pick rate of an operator that would be more beneficial. Uh, a cap can, a Thorn. Thorn had an ACOG, so did Mozzie in the pre on the, in the test servers before Operation Deadly Omen came out, and those were immediately taken away, which I think was a good idea, but when we saw a decrease in a pick rate when it came down to those operators. I mean, how many times have you ran into a Thorn? How many times have you ran into an Alibi? How many times have you ran into a Mute? Well, okay, Mute's a, 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 a very OP operator, and I think a lot of people do play him, but when he had the 1.5 site, essentially an ACOG on defense, he was one of the most picked rate operators at the time. So we were left at this question. A lot of people would argue with me and say, oh, well, everybody should have every site. Not necessarily, because once again, defenders do have the advantage, and taking away that ACOG would give defense an opportunity, one, to play slow, 
there would be not so much roaming meta. I call it roaming meta because a lot of times you get into games and people are roaming around and playing like it's Call of Duty and not even throwing down their gadgets. I mean, heck, um, Thunderbird would even be a picked operator more because her ability is great because you could heal people, you put healing stations down, but because she doesn't have an ACOG, not a lot of people like the player. So I feel like maybe you Rainbow Six Siege, I know they said, hey, we're not going to, you know, nerf operators or balance operators based off their ACOG should, in my opinion, take ACOGs away so that we can get not necessarily gadget meta back, but we can see defense being able to use their abilities or their gadgets in order to repel attackers than everyone having an ACOG. I mean, a majority of people you see, like the Boss G, for example, the Boss G is a really good gun. Before, I don't know what Rainbow Six Siege creator started using Vigil with the Boss G, but Boss G has an ACOG on it. Now that they've boosted and overpowered the Boss G, that one tap you within 50 meters, majority of the time, uh, Vigil's banned when I play ranked because we don't want to deal with the Boss G, with the ACOG, with one tap capability. I think the nerf that operator would be getting rid of its ACOG. That would force people to play a different operator because once again, in my opinion, visual doesn't bring a lot to the team. It just wastes time for defenders, but how you're wasting time for defenders when you're just one tapping them a mile away off a of spawn with your boss G with an ACOG. See, this is an example of why ACOGs are a little bit overpowered and I'm all for having fun, but when it comes to the tactic ability and strategy of the game, it really takes away from the game when your team's just running all ACOGs and you're not really using gadgets. This, in my opinion, isn't as fun as original Siege. Yes, I would love to see Jaeger with an ACOG, but I mean, his gun's so nerfed that I feel like people would only use Jaeger ACOG for a few weeks before they realized they could go pick Doc with the ACOG or someone else on the team with the ACOG. So in my opinion, I think the uh, ability to remove ACOGs from defenders would balance out the game and maybe if you want that zoomed sight, bring the 1.5 sight back. With the slow ADS speed that we have, the 1.5 sight wouldn't be as overpowered as it was in the past. Now, remember, a lot of people used Warden when Warden had the 1.5 sight. So maybe buffing abilities on defenders would help people make the decision if they want to use a zoom sight or a character that has a zoom sight of the gun, or just get them, get rid of them entirely and force those abilities um, on defending operators maybe to be buffed so that people could be more strategic in Rainbow Six Siege. Because this game, in the end, is a team-based game utilizing strategy rather than Call of Duty, which is running around and gunning. But that's just my opinion. This is my just small little take on ACOGs and Rainbow Six Siege. You guys don't have to agree with me. It's totally okay. We're on the internet. You can comment down below if you do agree with me, if you don't agree with me. And then also, guys, leave a comment down below of what you guys want to see me talk about next. I'm always, always looking for new content ideas and would love to answer questions in my community as well as the Siege community. Once again, my name is Bo with a 9 degree keyboard. This is my take on the ACOG and Rainbow Six Siege. Hope you guys like this video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.